Hi guys, it's Igor, and today we are reviewing 2012 Toyota Tundra. My favorite thing about Toyota Tundra is that the rear seat inside this cabin. I think only Toyota has this soft open mechanism. This car may be even more solid on the road compared to any mid-size SUV. It's limited version with 5.7 liter engine and TRD package. Particular our vehicle equipped with 5.7 liter engine with 381 horsepower. Just for a couple years Toyota built the same engine for Toyota Tundra with a supercharger and in this case they increase horsepower to 504. Right now only one option is that if you can buy this uh, supercharger separate from this car. Only don't, don't forget about one thing. Supercharger, if you want to keep your manufacturer warranty, is supposed to be installed by Toyota dealers. Particularly, this engine still the same from 2007, since they introduced this uh, car on the market, and uh, still top-of-the-line engine. Even right now, in 2020, Toyota Tundra still is very fast car. From 0 to 60, you can get in 6.4 or 6.7 uh, seconds, depending on the version of this truck. But with supercharger version of this engine, you can get from 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds. Thunder has three different cabins. Standard one with just bed with uh, two passenger, a double one and the super crew as our. Also, Thunder could have three different wheelbase and three different type of beds. With Crew Max cabin, you can get only shortest one uh, bed, which is 5.5 feet. With double cab, you can get middle one or long one, 6.5 feet or 8 feet. With standard, it could be or 8 feet long bed or 6.5 feet bed. Nothing unusual you can find in the truck bed for Toyota Tundra. Only one feature, which I would say still never see on any other truck, is way how you can open tailgate. I think only Toyota has this soft open mechanism. With TRD Pro version for three and a half thousand dollars, you can get forged alloy rims with BF Goodrich Ultrain tires on it. With this kind of uh, tires, you you can get more off-road uh, capability compared to original one Bridgestone uh, Dweller HP. But uh, in the same time, you can get worse braking. On 17 forged rims uh, from Toyota TRD Pro, you can get uh, from 60 to zero braking distance uh, in 44 feet. With 20 inch rims and uh, Bridgestone all season tires, braking distance would be smaller, 40 feet. I think Toyota Tundra would be maybe one of the most boring review for me because to be honest, nothing really tell about it because in general, it's a very reliable car, and uh, this car has 130,000 miles, and I would say almost nothing to tell about it. Additionally, to 5.7 liter V8 engine from 2007 until 2009, Toyota Tundra was equipped with six cylinder engine. It was one GRFE engine with 236 horsepower. Later, in 2010, the same engine received a dual VVTI system and horsepower was increased to 270. Also in 2007-2009 Toyota Tundra was equipped with a very popular in Europe engine which is a 4.7 liter engine 2UZFE and horsepower was on this engine 276. Later in 2010 4.7 liter engine was replaced by 4.6 liter engine with 310 horsepower and the same engine still on the production even until now. First problem which I can see I can find out only right now with 130,000 miles in it and it's exactly the same problem which I remember we have on uh, uh, previous generation of Toyota Land Cruiser when we replaced first time radiator on 300,000 miles. Over here on Tundra right now it's 130 but you see we get leak from radiator probably need to replace and also just small foggy area over here you see oil start to coming up but I would say it's nothing just foggy not not leak but maybe in, in the future you will need to replace uh, valve cover gasket because usually from my experience on each Toyota you need to do this around 130 120 thousand miles biggest maintenance supposed to be as on any other Toyotas at 100 thousand miles which is going to be just spark plugs because you don't have any more over here on this engine timing belt just timing chain just spark plugs need to be done very easy to reach and I would say for 30 minutes it's gonna be done. From my experience I would recommend to use the Iridium spark plugs from Denso or NGK and in this case you don't have to be worried about them 
at least next 100,000 miles, maybe even more. Price uh, usually around $13 for these spark plugs, but again, if you want, you can pay it to your mechanic, but I think even not experienced uh, guy could do this for at least one and a half, two hour by himself. You see, battery was already replaced and usually on Toyota they work around five years. I always was a fan of hoods, the same as on this one, Toyota Tundra. When you open the hood, you always open with a grill. In this case, it's much easier to reach any cooler, for example, for your power steering, for your engine cooler system, even on the front. 5.7 liter engine on Toyota Tundra equipped with additional transmission and the engine oil cooler, which is means that you're supposed to use more oil on this engine. It's uh, eight quarts, as you can see, we even put the note, and this means that you're supposed to spend a little bit more money compared to any other truck or car. For example, on our service for regular synthetic, like for regular synthetic oil change, we usually charge $60 with all fluids included, but for this kind of engine, usually 80. Regular maintenance stuff has a filter, also very re easy to replace. You can do this also by yourself, just remove these clips and you can change it. You don't have to unscrew anything. It's very reliable and very easy to do. Interior in Toyota Tundra is very roomy and uh, everything was built to be ready to fit very big guy and work in uniform. You see, I'm 6.1 height and uh, even if I'm gonna wear plastic hard hat on my head, I still gonna fit or here. The same situation with uh, uh, any other buttons on dashboard or door handle. You see how big it is? It feels a little bit weak, but I would say really strong. And even if I'm gonna wear working gloves, you see, doesn't matter, I'm still able to open it and fit it very well. The same with any buttons, huge, the old huge temperature regulators, Transmission shifter, everything easy to do even inside in, in the gloves. I would say that Toyota Tundra one of the most quietest Toyota which I ever drove. But only one bad thing about this interior because it's very squeaky, especially because of this plastic center console. Because you hear everything is plastic with a, without any noise insulation as on any Toyota. And for example, especially make noise all the central console in this armrest. When Toyota designed Tundra, they understand that this is gonna be a working truck, not a fancy truck. And they find out that this central console is supposed to fit 15.4 inches laptop. You can remove this one and laptop will fit easy. Also, you can put it in more easier area that's over here. And for example, this plastic stuff you can stick over here. You can access to your face tissue, credit cards or map pencil whatever you want over here also additional charge inside the central console if you want to close your cell phone from somebody's eyes like everything is very convenient for use everything was built to be easy to wash or care you see it's even central console you can remove like this wash it but only one, one bad thing that is everything from plastic which is means it's gonna be noisy i would say on a bad quality roads for a long trip, it's not gonna be like good decision to drive Toyota Tundra. But in the same time, size of this car like make your trip very, very nice. In 2012, top of the line limited version, you can get only with six CD changer and with a rear view camera and monitor was mounted inside the rear view mirror. But the original owner replaced this six CD changer radio and installed Alpine navigation and right now everything works very nice especially with top of the line speaker from GBL limited version equipped with double zone climate control USB port and IEX cable also heated seats and some additional options you can get vented front seats two spots to charge your phone or connect any other equipment two glow box small on the top and regular one on the bottom. Buttons to adjust your angle of your headlight and light to turn on and off your bed light. I would say that seats is very comfortable, they're very wide and they really could make your long trip very easy. And what I can tell about these seats, for example, if I'm gonna test any other vehicle, I would say that it's not enough of side support. But you know, 
maybe because this car is usually supposed to be with a heavy weight in a bed also again like uh, additional with this uh, trd suspension i never feel that i don't have enough of side support because during that uh, hard turn i feel that this car more solid even compared to my uh, dodge durango or the same toyota as toyota highlander i believe just with five passenger many and maybe just couple bags in your uh, trunk but this car may be even more solid on the road compared to any mid-size suv car equipped with uh, uh, electronic assist uh, all-wheel drive system which is means that you can use it with just real wheel drive right, like right now for high position when you use it as a four-wheel drive or for low four-wheel drive with a low uh, transmission position and also nice thing about 5.7 liter version and i would say in any other toyota Tundra that this car equipped with a uh, automatic uh, lock uh, rear differential my favorite thing about toyota Tundra is not a uh, power it's not a towing capacity that's a rear seat inside this cabin look how much space this truck has on the rear seat i can even cross my legs in working shoes and feel myself very comfortable if you want to install uh, car seats for your child you can have is a fixed uh, system but only on the two side seats nothing on the middle one and also you can move rear seat like this in this case you can store something behind your seats only one not maybe best thing about toyota tundra but doesn't matter i think it's pretty uh, small it's central tunnel on the middle of a uh, rear floor for example ford f-150 doesn't have it but on tundra you can get additional storage under the knees of uh, uh, rear seats over here you don't have anything but for additional payment you can get it nothing really fancy on the back seat it's only one or well, maybe two things it's you have rear air deflector and one charger point for your devices also would be nice for toyota tundra to get a little bit more light inside the interiors maybe it would be nice to install some additional one as reading lights uh, under on top of the back seat and maybe some big one on the middle because they have just four bulbs on whole huge interior which i think not enough okay about handling of uh, 2012 toyota tundra to be honest it's really surprised me i expect this handling would be worse because it's frame build uh, uh, truck uh, but it feel more like a regular mid-size suv just with bigger size uh, uh, why i believe because this car uh, mounted on trd suspension and for example yes you expect that truck would be full with uh, some weight on a trunk bed with a uh, full of people inside uh, like worker people but uh, when you're driving just uh, like for your regular grocery shopping or something like this it feels even more solid on a roll there and i would say i don't feel any roll over during the corner i don't feel any play in the steering wheel it's very nice Re really really nice probably because suspension is uh, more solid and the uh, this suspension is supposed to work with a much bigger weight but during the, your normal life it's more than enough brake is fine as usually for any other toyota not not bad not something amazing just regular brakes the ability is awesome on this car only one thing which i wish to have that if you have more uh, way to adjust your seat uh, in a down position because for example i'm 6-1 and they tell that they build this car with expectation to wear by like driver pl a plastic hard hat but i think like you definitely could find some worker more taller than me and in this case i wish to lower the seats a little bit more really nice big uh, outside mirrors they really allow you to see everything around you you don't have to even worry about blind spot monitors it wasn't enough for me but also you can order mirrors which you can adjust by like to pull them a little bit out of the vehicle to be able to tow some huge uh, trailer or like motorhome noise insulation is very nice in this vehicle and for example we measure 65 decibel which is even a little bit lower compared to honda pilot but uh, what i don't like about this vehicle it's a uh, exhaust noise some people are crazy about this noise they think it's really uh, like tundra noise but i would say if you compare this engine noise with a german vehicle or for example with the american truck i think american truck is more quiet compared to this one this sounds more like they 
somebody is screaming uh, on a trunk bed of this car and for example during the normal time as right now during my work trip it's fine but if i'm gonna drive this car at night time and what's happened with me when i just took at this car and for a minute i drove this car in really quiet place in the middle of the forest i really find out that this uh, engine noise especially not an engine engine i would say more exhaust noise really bother me when i put rpm more than uh, 2000 it's sounds more like scream i would wish to get them or a little bit uh, on another note or maybe a little bit more quiet also interesting thing about the uh, trd pro exhaust system you can purchase for uh, around 800 dollars trd pro exhaust system with double exhaust and for example according to toyota trd website this exhaust uh, increase your horsepower or horsepower between 8 and 10 horsepower but for example if you bought Toyota Tundra with TRD package already, they still tell that it still have the same uh, 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 engine power, which is 381 horsepower, but uh, according to Motor Trend Road Test, TRD Pro and the regular Toyota Tundra get even different uh, uh, 0 to 6 uh, acceleration, and TRD Pro get faster for 0 0.1 seconds from 0 to 60. What I like about Toyota Tundra is also different suspension. For example, on uh, Tacoma, when you press the brake, you always think that you're gonna touch with your head your windshield. On Tundra, you don't have this feeling. You, you feel like you drive a regular car. Very nice that Toyota chose this kind of design as Chrysler did on his uh, early 2000 car, which is called uh, forward cap. And uh, with this kind of uh, design you have a shorter hood and this short hood allow you to see everything on the front of your vehicle i would say you don't feel that it's like really long or very like wide hood it's fine i would say i have more visibility compared even to my dodge magnum guys what i would like to tell you about reliability of toyota tundra if you see some review if you read some article uh, online about Toyota Tundra and somebody tell you, oh, I have 60,000 miles uh, mileage on my Tundra and everything fine, I'm happy with this truck. Guys, about Tundra mileage, I think you can skip any review or any article on the internet if it's mileage less than 150,000 miles because it's so reliable truck and I would say nothing to even tell about it if it's mileage less than 150,000 miles. The same story with any other vehicle, I would say you can find out if it's reliable or no vehicle only after 100,000 miles. If it's something major happened before, it's definitely unreliable car. If it's after, it's definitely not bad car. Underneath of 2012 Toyota Tundra in Massachusetts with 130,000 miles mileage. What you can tell over here, car looks very nice compared to any other truck on this territory. Just a little bit rusty frame, but again, compared to any other vehicle, especially to GM, it's completely fine. You see that Toyota put some seal coating on the uh, bottom of the body, but not everywhere, but doesn't matter, it's more than enough, and I would say not so bad, and even compared to some Mercedes, it's not bad. We can see some rust, but in, in general, it's really good looking car for this mileage. The biggest problem with Toyota, it's rust on the front and rear shocks and even over here you see the shocks built by Bilstein for Toyota and probably <laughs> they built by Bilstein but was painted by Toyota because uh, Toyota usually like put very thin uh, layer of coating on shocks and usually you can get hole in, in, on them and shocks itself is fine but you, they start to leak through the body and uh, your shocks is like get broken you see over here you can see even some crack I believe next year or maybe this one you're supposed to replace them on current vehicle whole suspension still original we didn't change anything all control arms bow bushings ball joints and still original i heard from some people that they replace in massachusetts and canada for first ball joints only on 250,000 miles our still everything like from manufacture our truck we have 26 gallon fuel tank if you want you can get additional one 10 gallons in this case fuel tank would be extended over here also you can buy aftermarket fuel tank and in this case you can find some even 46 gallons the biggest problem which we have underneath of this car it's problem with the rear end and uh, we're supposed to replace oil and we should clean and polish uh, uh, bearing and uh, some stuff over here in main gear 
This happened probably because uh, owner of this truck usually uses this vehicle to unload his boat in the ocean and uh, we find that, that oils mix with salt water and get something like white stuff inside. That's why I would recommend if you use this car or truck to uh, deliver some boat to the ocean, maybe it's good to change oil each at the end of each season. Probably because of the same reason right now this truck has very very minor foggy oil area next to the axle seal at the end of each side, side of uh, rear end. You see one is over here, another one here. And also baking plate is start to be rusty. Probably they're gonna fall off next season. And the same story with the shocks, you see? But what has surprised me, even with the salt water, rear shocks looks better than front one. I told during the test drive that I'm not really happy with the sound of exhaust system and probably that's the reason why. You see, exhaust pipe is very tiny, especially over here next to the flange. You see also area where it's gonna be, I think, future problem and start to make hole. Yeah, and uh, for example, even just recently work on uh, GMC Savannah with 4.8 liter engine and the exhaust system was much wider. I think for 5.7 liter engine is definitely supposed to be bigger. The biggest problem what I found it on other review and articles that uh, at again at 250,000 miles people replaced the first set of U joint on our vehicle still original one. Transmission also, I think one of the most reliable which I ever saw. Maybe a little bit jerky, but again, very reliable. Oil pans on engine and transmission nice, but if you decide to take care about your vehicle and replace transmission oil, I would recommend to replace it together with the oil filter for transmission and also together with the bolts. As I told you during our previous review of Toyota, usually bolts on oil pans it's very, very rusty. Sometimes you even can't unscrew them, you're supposed to heat them up or do something you see even here it's gonna be hard to replace uh, if we're gonna do oil change in or replace transmission oil filter oil change on toyota tundra is a little bit difficult because they put this protection steel protection under the front of the engine and difficult because oil filter is located over here on, on this side and to remove them you need to take this plate out and usually what's happened you see all these bolts which hold this uh, plate Usually they stuck and get rusty and some of them even already broken. You see this one is fine, but another one is broken. That's why during each oil change, usually I put some grease on thread of each of this bolt to be able to unscrew next time. The same I do with any other bolts on any other vehicle. What I can tell about Toyota Tundra, even right now with a lot of modern competitors, I think Toyota Tundra still one of the best truck on the market. Even this one, 2012 Toyota Tundra, doesn't have a lot of uh, huge issue. Even from my memory, first generation of Toyota Tundra never have a big issue. The same story with Toyota Land Cruiser. This is why I would say Toyota Tundra is really good decision to purchase it, even use one, but if you purchase this truck in the north of United States or Canada, or for example, in Russia or same, some other country with a lot of salt on the road during the winter, I would recommend for you, please don't save your money because you're gonna waste more in the future. Do some anti-rust coating on this car. I'm sure that you already did it, but just would like to remind you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching us and see you in our next review.